Brutus is mooching in his garden after being up all night, thinking about the Caesar problem. Now he's reached a decision. Caesar must die. What's suddenly changed his mind? A servant brings him a letter, one of the ones forged by Cassius, that's supposed to be from the good citizens of Rome. Brutus reads between the lines. He has to kill Caesar before he abuses his power. Remember the Ides of March? In Act 1, Scene 2, a crazy soothsayer kept warning Caesar about the Ides of March, a date on the Roman calendar. Now, Brutus finds out that today's the Ides of March. Something big is going to happen. All the conspirators arrive at Brutus's house. They're in disguise and really keen to get this murder going. Cassius even wants to bump off Mark Antony while they're at it. Brutus talks him out of it. This is the kind of thing that gives bloodthirsty conspirators a bad name. For their plan to work, the conspirators need to get Caesar to come to the Senate in the morning, but they are worried he won't turn up. Decius reckons he's a master of flattery and can talk Caesar into going. After the conspirators leave, Brutus's wife, Portia, enters. She wants to know why he's in such a state, but he pretends that he's just sick. Portia doesn't believe him and stabs her own leg to show how brave she is. It's non-stop fun in the Brutus household. Finally, Brutus agrees to tell her what's bothering him, but before he can, another knock at the door. It's Ligarius, looking pale and sick. He tells Brutus that the only thing that can cure him is if he hears that Brutus is planning a noble venture. Well, what a coincidence. Brutus assures him that he is planning exactly that. Meanwhile, Caesar paces his house in his dressing gown. He's had a rough night, kept awake by his wife Calpurnia's terrible nightmares about him being killed. To top all this off, a servant enters and reports that they just sacrificed an animal and it didn't have a heart. In omen terms, this is one of the worst you can ever get. Still, Caesar tries to ignore all this. His wife pleads with him not to go to the Senate, but Caesar refuses to hide at home because he's scared. Finally, he agrees to send Mark Antony in his place. However, Decius arrives to take Caesar to the Senate. He says that Caesar will look like a coward if he stays at home simply because his wife is worried. Decius hears about Calpurnia's dream, where fountains of blood are pouring from Caesar's body. Decius explains that it's nothing to worry about, as it really shows how Caesar's lifeblood gives strength to everyone in Rome. He also tells Caesar that the Senate are planning on crowning him as king, something they can't do if he acts like a scaredy cat and doesn't come. Of course, silly me, says Caesar, and they prepare to head to the Senate. All the conspirators, including Brutus, arrive. So does Mark Antony. They all leave to go to the Senate. What could possibly go wrong? Artemidorus, another Roman, writes a note naming all the conspirators and warning Caesar to beware of them. He resolves to give the note to Caesar in the hope that it might save his life. Portia wants to know why Brutus has been acting so strangely and sends his servant, Lucius, to the Senate to see how he is. Suddenly, the crazy soothsayer appears again, looking for Caesar. He says he is planning to go speak with Caesar, probably to tell him another omen of doom. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on Julius Caesar, check out our summary of Act 3.